previously on Rubiego. Two years ago, both of us purchased a land right here in Eldor. Oh, it looks nice. We are about to do this really, really crazy thing. Nobody's gonna calm us down. Here it is. Turned out it was a real ton place. I think it's gonna be so We deserve whatever we're getting. It looks like there's a top. Literally changed our lives. This is just gonna get crazier and crazier. So at this point, we have a car. It's leaking coolant like a sieve. The transmission won't shift past third gear. And there's a bunch of different electrical gremlins. We have this property in Eldorit. We have to secure the property. We need supply of water. And also, we need to have a place where we can store the water. We have tents. We need to make a pad where the tents are gonna sit on. Coming up next on Rubiego. Hello. Behind me is a hotel. This version of a hotel, it's actually a restaurant. On the other side, this is a garage. This is an auto parts store. This is something I'm trying to familiarize myself more with because we now own a car here. So our first step was to take care of some urgent electrical odds and ends. The entire driver's side window motor and regulator had actually been stolen. So the only thing holding the driver window in place was a metal coat hanger. The blower motor was making a horrendous noise and absolutely none of the gauges worked at all. To address these electrical issues, we went to a guy referred to us by my brother-in-law, a man referred to exclusively as Kawaya, due to his expertise in all things automotive electrical. And the magic this man was able to work in such a short time was nothing short of remarkable. And flat out embarrassing to US shops that have far larger facilities, far more expensive tools, and far more technicians. In less than two hours time, Mr. Kawaya was able to find us a used window regulator and motor, install it, remove and clean our blower motor, diagnose and fix our fuel sending unit so that we had at least one working gauge, and get some lights working along the way. And while he did that, I decided to get a head start on the mechanical end of things, searching for the coolant leak so we'd know where to start the next day. Fortunately, it didn't take me very long to find multiple places where we had leaks. And now it's time for us to do what our car still can't, which is switch gears to our building project. The first thing that we had to do is secure the fence. What we're using is a live fence, which is made from reclaimed wood. We opted for that because we are trying to have a really natural finish. And by the help of my dad, all the way from Kitale, he helped get that delivered to our property. The next problem that we wanted to solve was our water supply. We decided to do the Kenyan version of a well, which people here call a borehole. It's much simpler and less expensive than what we in the US call a well, and it is just as effective. We're so lucky that right here in Eldoret, the water levels are so high in that we don't have to go so deep. 24 feet down, we already have plenty of water. And we're gonna go just a little bit more than that so that we never have to worry about it. In the meantime, here in Eldore, my sister Sheila was supervising and helping us. So the main idea was just to have two tents. We needed to come up with foundation or a platform. You guys decided to do the foundation, the concrete foundation. So I had to call Nyaga. I thought he was the best person for this because I could tell him, do this, do that, and then is on board. Though we had originally drew 20 by 20 meters, after a while we realized that was way too big for what we wanted. So we went through several different ideas for the size. Nyaga called me, can you come please? I said, okay. What's up? He's like, don't you just come and see. I went there. I found them. <laughs> they had only dug 16 feet, feet versus meters. And I'm like, even one tent cannot fit here. So. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 you can't do 18 meters, that's too, 16 meters, that's too long. I'm like, no, you just do what I'm telling you. After the 16 meters, they ended up digging 18. Now the, the foundation was massive. It was even taking almost three quarters of the plot. So at the end, we just wound up with 18 by 14 meters, which is still plenty big. So that's how we started. So each tent will have no back wall because it will be up against a stone wall, which on the other side is our bathrooms. In the middle is our kitchen and living room area. 
Originally, a plan was to have a kitchen that's just open into the outside. Just like the house we stayed at when we visited Mount Longanaut in the Lima house. But we ran into some issues. You have to stick around to see what happened. So today, we're in the Longata neighborhood of Nairobi. It's where we found this car, but it's also where we were directed to this amazing shop. Yes, this, on this sidewalk that I'm walking on right now, and around the corner, is a shop specializing in Japanese off-roaders, specifically the Mitsubishi Pajero. Despite being situated on a sidewalk, this is a full-service shop, and they do anything from small, medium, to massive jobs, including major engine work. Again, right here, on the sidewalk, in the middle of town. And while we're waiting, there's a really convenient cafe. So if you like buying old used cars like me, you know there's this process to go to of mechanically sorting everything to make sure that it's going to be solid for whatever your intended use case is. We want to be able to take this car wherever we want to go, at any time, for any reason, and not have to worry about it breaking. We're going through now, and we're getting everything bulletproofed to our specification. A little bit of this to the transmission, a little bit of that to the turbo, some new rear shocks, a few electrical odds and ends, and then we are going to be good to go for the seven hour drive to Eldoran. So what's left? As far as what's absolutely crucial in order for us to go, nothing. Except that didn't exactly turn out to be the case, because shortly after I said that, our starter died. But better it happened there in Nairobi than somewhere in the middle of our trip. So we returned the next morning to help install that and get on our way. Fortunately for us, our efforts paid off, and we were rewarded with an uneventful trip from Nairobi to Aldona, despite it being very slow. And if it looks like we're wrapping this up almost exactly the same way as we did last time, we are. But you know what? We filled in a lot of gaps in between. After communicating remotely with Sheila for weeks, planning this out, coordinating materials, making all these decisions, the feeling of seeing what our efforts looked like in real life was unbelievable. Oh my god, that is our fence. This was not here before. This was not here before. So don't go far, because next week, you're gonna see how the foundation finished construction, how our walls started to go up, and what happened when the tents finally got delivered. You won't wanna miss it. Thank you so much for watching. And now, for our very first installment of what you find when you buy a nearly 30-year-old car in Kenya, a professional inspection. I need to find out what this thing is that's hanging here. And I need to find out what this thing is that's hanging here. Dust sleeves on the caliper pins. There's something shoved in there, like tape or whatever, to cover this one up. I don't know what that hose is supposed to be. There's another one of the same thing. I wonder if it's for this adjustable suspension. Why is there a plastic tie in here? Yeah, I think this might be for the adjustable suspension because it looks identical to the one in front. I know there's some kind of really advanced sounding system that's supposed to measure the load on the suspension and adjust the brake pressure accordingly. So I think I found that. More bushings that need to get replaced. We'll get this cleaned up, but for a 25-year-old car, frame looks great. Yeah.